Hi, I'm Paul, the Happy Gilder. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to look at a method of glue chipping that doesn't involve a load of industrial machinery. So if you've seen my previous videos on glue chipping, you'll know that I use a high-end vinyl cutter and I've also got a quite an industrial sized sandblaster. And I'm completely aware that that's not an option for some people, whether that's down to the expense or just the lack of space to have such equipment. So I want to see if I can do this using minimal tools, real low budget, and see if I can get the same results. But before we move on, if you'd like to see some of the work I've produced over the years, I've put a link to my Instagram in the description. And there's also a link to my Etsy shop where I'm selling some of my vector designs. Also, if there's anyone who's made stuff using the videos that I've put out so far, I'd love to see it. And if you're on Instagram, if you would just put hashtag Happy Gilder on any of the posts you've done following the videos I've made, I'd absolutely love that. So anyway, um, moving on, let's go into the shed and get started. Right, so I've just got a small piece of glass and what I'm going to do is apply a bit of white vinyl to that and then using a sharpie, I'm just going to draw a sort of basic letter onto the white vinyl. So let's get started with that. I'll just move this over here. Okay, so the white vinyl, I just buy it off eBay. And I mean, if you're gonna be doing small pieces, you can buy these in individual A4 sheets. They're real cheap, but I tend to buy a sort of a roll and you can get a roll in, I think it's five meters by 60 centimeters. It might be six meters, I can't remember. But you can normally get those on buy one, get one free for like about 12 pounds with free delivery. So, okay, that's the vinyl applied. So let's get my ruler. Now, because this is reverse glass, I just need to kind of bear in mind that what I draw on here needs to be in reverse. So because I haven't got anything for reference at hand. I'm just going to do a letter E and I'm going to do a real basic E and just blocks. So that's kind of a... Pop that there. Right, so that's going to be my E. Bit crap, but you know, I'm sure it'll work. So I'm just going to cut that out now. Okay, so let's take this out. Right, and that's my letter E. Not too bad. Now what I'm gonna be using to etch the surface of this is a rotary tool. So this one, my particular one, is attached to a scroll saw, but you can just buy a Dremel and then it's like a handheld little tool where you can swap out the tips. Now I'm using these diamond tips and these were five pound off eBay and that included delivery. So nice and cheap. And what I'm gonna do is starting with a fine tip like this, I'm gonna go around the edges of it. And then once I've kind of done the border, I'm gonna switch to something a bit bigger so that I can sort of color it in. So I'll get started. Just brush all the dust off that and have a look. A few gaps, but I don't think they'll matter. Um, the main thing is the edges, really, because you just want this to look like a bold letter. Even if the glue contracts and doesn't grip on in the edges, at least that's going to be a sort of sharp line around the edge where it's etched. So now I'm going to move indoors and apply the glue. Right, so all I've done is I've brought this in from the shed and I've just given it a rinse under the cold tap just because I wanted to get rid of any of the kind of dust that the little Dremel tool made. So 
I'm not going to go through the whole sort of glue preparation process because I've got a few glue chipping tutorials so I'm going to put a link to those up here but what I will say is in my last tutorial I'd said if you've got any glue left don't throw it away because you can reuse it and this is the bottle I used two or three weeks ago when I made my advanced glue chipping tutorial. Now I will always say don't heat glue in the microwave because you need all of the kind of tiny little sort of balls to melt into water and, and that's just the best way to do that is slow cooking it on the hob. That doesn't mean I won't reheat it in the microwave. So this has been in the fridge for three weeks so I just put it on defrost and I think it took about 45 seconds to a minute on defrost not on sort of normal microwave because that'll just sort of boil it and, and ruin it. But now that's nice and warm, it's the same temperature as it would be if I got it off the hob and I'm just now going to apply it to the etch layer. So let's get going. So I'm now just going to leave that to dry until it's the kind of consistency of a jelly sweet. And then I'll come back, trim off the excess, and then just leave it and let it chip. Well, hopefully it'll chip, we'll see. Okay. So the glue's set, and I'm just going to trim it around the edges. And this is kind of the reason why I use the vinyl. So you could, if you've got a very steady hand, do away with the vinyl and just kind of put the glass over something and trace it, or even just draw it by hand. But I find the vinyl's a really good guide for kind of uh, trimming away the excess glue because you can kind of just, you know, rest the tip of the blade against the edge of the vinyl and that's just easily sort of guides it along. So, oh, he says. So I'm just going to trim this off. Okay, then just using a wooden stick or, well, any sort of stick really, just kind of scoop that excess um, glue away. So that's everything trimmed. Now what I'm going to do is kind of, I'm going to score in where the lines would be if this was a beveled letter or a convex letter. Now I don't even know if the chipping's going to work on this, so I thought I might as well sort of experiment to see if I could do a convex glue chip while we're here. So let's just see. So I'm just going to join up all of the kind of corners. And this is me with my super shaky hand, so this might not come out as planned. So let's put a kind of V on, on, the, on the end of each letter. Well, it's experimental, we'll see. So I'm just gonna put that on my heat source and then leave that to chip overnight. And we'll see how it looks in the morning. Right, so that's the result that we got from that. So I think we can say it's conclusive that you can glue chip without the kind of sandblaster, but it's inconclusive as to whether or not you can achieve the same results that you get from sandblasting it with a kind of even coating of grit. But what I'm going to do, sticking with the theme of creating a piece without having any of the equipment, I'm going to finish this up and I'm going to use the Krylon looking glass, which is a kind of mirror effect spray paint. I've just got this left from an earlier video, so I'm going to use that. So I'll just cut a couple of mill line around this whole thing to give myself some bright lines. Krylon looking glass over that, then take the vinyl away and then I'm just going to back it up with black spray paint. So all in all, pretty basic tools to complete it, but might not look the part, but we'll see. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and get started with it.
and there's the finished piece. So it's not something that I'd compare with any of the other stuff that I've made on this channel, but I'm pretty impressed with how it's come out considering there's no vinyl cutter, there's no sandblaster, there's no gold leaf. It's quite literally just made with a Dremel and some spray paint. And I think putting in more effort than I did and someone with a much steadier hand than mine who could hand paint some nice letters in reverse would get much nicer results than I've achieved here. But overall, it's come out pretty well. So yeah, something you can do without having to have all of the industrial machinery. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please subscribe to the channel and click the little thumbs up icon and please share it with anyone else who you think might enjoy it. So till next time, cheers. So glue chipping aside, these things are really handy if you're into any form of glass art. They're awesome for kind of doing intricate kind of details. And you can also use them like a pencil because although glass is binary, and by that I mean, you know, once it's etched, you're not going to get any different tones from it. You can, using these, you can shade because it kind of staggers it as it sort of hits the, the glass in sort of random intervals. So I'm just going to switch the camera angle and attempt to redraw this photograph. Now, the only thing I need to really consider when doing this is that I want to be colouring in the white areas, not the dark areas. So anything that's pure white, I'll go solid and then I'll shade it out. Anything that's black, I won't touch, you know, and it's kind of almost like you're sort of drawing in negative. So we'll see how I get on. It might look terrible, but it's worth a go. So it's not the best and I've got pretty shaky hands, but I reckon someone without mega shaky hands could do an absolutely awesome job of this. And I mean, that only took probably about 10 or 15 minutes, but you can get finer tips. You can get a better rotary tool than I've got. And, you know, you could get really intricate with that and do some really nice subtle shading. So the only other thing is it's on the front, which it shouldn't be, but I haven't got a printer, so I couldn't print what I wanted out and then flip it to sort of do it on the back of the glass. By the way, it's pretty smooth. I think it looked nice with gold behind it or mirror behind it, but yeah, it's a, just another thing you can do with a rotary tool, really.